Hello and welcome to the 98th episode of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and today is Monday, July 15th, 2013. I'm recording in sunny Florida in the United States of America. It's really overcast today, so the light's going to fade in and out today. And uh, it hasn't rained yet, but it probably will this afternoon. We're in the time of year where it rains pretty much every afternoon, and Bandit does not like that. <laughs> I am Sock Bunny pretty much everywhere on the internet, such as, well, I have my show notes on the computer, so you'll see me looking to the side. I am Sock Bunny on uh, my fitness pal, Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, and also I have a Fitbit, so if you want to friend me on there, just send me a message. The blog is at sockbunnyknitandfit.blogspot.com. The email is sockbunnyknitandfit at gmail.com, and I am terrible about checking that. I need to be better about that. The Etsy shop is sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. And the you can also like me on Facebook at Sock Bunny Studios on Facebook Facebook.com. Um, I haven't heard anything from Blip. Uh, if you are new to podcasts, um, a bunch of podcasts have been kicked off of Blip, which is where we've been hosting our podcasts. And I haven't heard anything yet. I know several people have. I uh, have made the executive decision that I'm going to stay on Blip until they kick me off. So whenever that happens, I will let you know. Um, but if you uh, normally watch uh, video podcasts and um, you think maybe one of your podcasters is missing, they may not be missing. They may just have been kicked off of Blip and you need to go to their blog or contact them on Ravelry to find out where they are. Um, so that's what's going on with that right now. I know some people are uh, choosing to go over to WordPress and it's going to cost money to do that. Um, a lot of uh, podcasters are taking donations for that, so if you can uh, afford to support them, please do. I probably will not be taking donations for mine um, because I have the Etsy shop. So uh, if if and when I do ever switch over to a hosting service that costs money, I won't be asking for donations, but you can always support me by either buying the yarn or buying one of my patterns or gifting one of my patterns to somebody or something like that. So that's where things stand there. No news, I guess, is good news. Of course, I probably just jinxed myself and I'll probably get an email <laughs> since I said that. Um, I am being a naughty girl today and drinking a Coke. <laughs> I have, I've been trying to cut back to only Sundays, but I, uh, for the last three weeks, I've been with Sarah. We've been running around like maniacs, and I've fallen into my bad habits of getting Cokes. So, uh, my cover photo will be a picture of me with a Coke. Because <laughs> I'm wearing the Coke shirt, so I had to have a Coke, right? <laughs> I uh, after today though I am going to cut back to just Sundays again because I don't need to be drinking a Coke every day that's no I don't need to be doing that it's bad for me bad but I love it anyway um, we have a shop update going live today at 5 o'clock Eastern as I had mentioned previously the shop eight shop updates are going to happen on the 15th and 30th of each month, February excluded, of course. And well, until at least through the summer, and I'm going to see how it works. So I wanted to show you what's going to be in the shop. And this is at sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. I have six colorways going in the shop. One of them is new. This is one that my daughter, Sarah, uh, created. She chose the colors for it. And it is like a lime green with some aqua and some brown and some bare areas that are a little bit dyed uh, brownish. So um, I thought about a name for this and I'm going to call it Trellis About It. But it's like Trellis, T-R-E-L-L-I-S. So instead of Tell Us About It, it's Trellis About It because it's sort of like, uh, it reminds me of a vine growing on a trellis. So this is on the Miracle Base, which is my BFL nylon base. And there will be three of these going up in the shop. And then I have three of Birds of a Feather. This is also in the Miracle Base. This is the BFL base. And this has some hot pink and some blues and some purplish, which is more reddish purple than what you're seeing there. Actually, that's pretty accurate right there. So that's Birds of a Feather. 
And I have two skeins of the ever popular Bee Leaf, uh, which is a tonal colorway. And this is for these light areas are not as white as they're showing on the video, but they're showing white for some reason. They're not that white. Um, this is uh, a colorway I designed for my Bee Leaf Half Pie Shawl, which we will be having a, a knit along for in September, October, and November. And I'm super excited. I wish I could cast on now for that. And then I have three skeins going up for my ever popular California Flamingos, which is a tonal pink over dyed with a black. And, oh, not last. I have one skein of lace weight in um, Police Call Box, which is actually darker than what you're seeing there. It's sort of a, uh, almost the color of the TARDIS from Doctor Who, so I call it Police Call Box. And last but not least, I have Fruit Smoothies, which is, uh, this time I dyed it darker than the last few times I had dyed it. Um, I thought more saturated color would look better, so it's a purple and orange and a strawberry red. So that it will also be in the shop, and that's also on the twisty base. The, uh, I call it my miracle base, the BFL. So we have those six colorways going up today at 5 o'clock Eastern time. And thank you to everybody who has purchased from me in the past. Oh, and I always keep forgetting to mention I do have, let me, get, let me grab one. I do have my um, podcast button for sale in the Etsy shop for $2. Um, if you order and you're not in the United States, I'm putting these in with um, international orders for free. I'm not going to ship just the button internationally. It's too much of a pain because I have to fill out the customs form and all that kind of stuff. It's just really a pain. So the, if you order from me internationally, you get a John John button anyway. Um, but if you're ordering in the United States and you want to add this on to your order, please do. Adorable little bunny. So those are $2 in the Etsy shop. Plus shipping, of course. And... So that is the shop update. I hope you like what you saw there. And next, let's talk about, oh, I want to say thank you. Somebody else left a star rating. So we have 67 uh, star ratings in iTunes. If you uh, watch the podcast through iTunes, please go and leave a star rating or and or a comment. And uh, please do that for all of your podcasters. We really, really do appreciate it. And... Uh, let's see. Oh, in the Ravelry group, we have over 1,300 people now. So thank you very much for joining that. If you haven't joined yet, why not? And we have lots of contests going on, and you always need to be a member of the group to win any of the contests that we have. So thank you to everybody who has joined. When we get to 1,500, I will have a prize drawing. So yay, whenever that happens. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about... Um, Ask Sock Bunny, Spinning, Look What I Made, Fitness, Sock Extravaganza, Tips and Tricks, Favorite Things, Stash Enhancement, and What I Am Watching and Reading. So let's hop right into that. First, before we do that, though, I want to um, show a family picture. A week ago Sunday, uh, as a family, we went to Bush Gardens, which if you've watched before, you know I'm obsessed with that place. It's a theme park here in Tampa. And... Um, since Sarah was home for college, we decided that we would, um, when we went into the park, we would allow them to take our picture. Because, you know, they always have the people and they try to sell you stuff. And we go so often, we generally don't have our picture made. But we decided to do it this time. And so, without further ado, here is the family portrait of us. So that is my husband, Joe, wearing the lime green and Rachel is in the purplish, and Sarah, my older daughter, is wearing the tie-dye shirt. And we had a fantastic day. It was awesome. It was really hot. Uh, but um, it only rained once, and that's when we were in a show. So that was really lucky for us. And it was a really, really beautiful, nice day. And I'll talk a little bit more about Bush Gardens. Um, I'm going to put this over here. I'll talk about more about Bush Gardens in a little bit. There we go. We'll just put that there for now. So that is our family portrait. We had wanted to have a family portrait made. So instead of going to a portrait studio, we just figured just do the one there. <laughs> just as easy and cheaper. 
All right, so let's go into Ask Sock Bunny. I got a message, well, in the Ravelry group, there's a thread called uh, Ask Sock Bunny. You can ask me or my bunny, John, John, any question that you want. Uh, so I got a message from Kath Paul, who is Kathleen from Maine, and she says, Hi, Kimberly, I was wondering about your sock size. What needles and stitch count do you use? They look so much wider than mine. Do you wear your socks slouchy, or is that just the way they look on the needles? Well, I don't really wear them slouchy, but they're not tight either. Um, I've knit, I should count, because I bet it's probably about 50 pairs of socks that I have knit. Um, I'll get one out that is almost done that I was going to talk about in a little bit anyway. Actually, this is done except for the grafting of the toe. So I've knit so many pairs of socks for myself that I have magic numbers that I always use and it always seems to work out. So um, I always cast on 64 unless it's a pattern that calls out either way, but say it's a vanilla sock. A vanilla sock, these are the things I always do. I always uh, cast on 64. I do about a dozen, 10 or 12 rows of ribbing and then I make my cuff 60 stitches, 60 rows long. And if I always do it the same way, then I don't have to write it down or think about it. So I do my um, cuff 60 across, I mean 60 rows up and down. And then I do, um, when I do the foot before the toe, but, but including the heel, so I start right after where you do the um, heel turn, right where the heel turn uh, starts, I count the rows and I do 80 rows. And then I start the toe. And for some reason, every time, those always work for me. So that's easy for me to remember. That's my basic vanilla sock. So I don't think they're um, loose or tight or I think they fit like normal. But you know what? I'll try one on real quick. I'll take my shoe off and I'll try it on so you can see. It, I don't think it's like... They're not baggy. Although if I, I've noticed if I wear them for a few days, they will be baggy. But I think that's just because the knitting stretches out. But when I first put them on, here's a pair. And excuse my leg, but <laughs> you can see it's normal. It's a normal fit. It's not like when I was little, I used to be able to put my foot behind my head. I cannot do that anymore. <laughs> so you can see it's not loose. It's not tight. It's just just right. So that is what works for me. I do use a 2.5 um, millimeter, a size one and a half needle, and that works best for me. Um, my first, I'd say 10 pairs of socks, I was actually using a size two, and they were, um, they were baggy. So some of my very first few pairs of socks are a little bit baggy. So thanks for putting up with looking at my foot. <laughs> Bring you back over here now. So that was a very good question. Um, I am interested, Kathleen, uh, how many stitches do you normally cast on and what size shoe? I wear a size eight and a half US. So I don't know if that makes a difference. Maybe it's just the gauge that um, you and I knit at. We may knit, you might be a looser or tighter knitter than I am or, or something like that. So I, I'm a pretty average knitter evidently. Um, most of the time, whatever the needle size they call for for gauge is what I will end up using. So, uh, and nobody's ever really told me that I was a uh, loose or tight knitter. So there you go. That's, I hope that answers your questions. If you have any other questions, definitely feel free to ask me. And if you have any questions for the, um, ask Kimberly or John, John thread, hop on over there and ask your question. Um, and thanks for asking. Next, we are going to talk about works in progress. I just showed you one. I want to start actually with my sweater, though. I am working on a sweater. Now, having Sarah home, actually, I was with Sarah for three weeks. We were in Atlanta for almost a week, and then she was home for two weeks. So for the last three weeks, my life has not been my own. I have been, oh my gosh, running around like a maniac. <laughs> we've gone to the beach. We've gone to Bush Gardens. We actually went to the beach twice. Uh, we've done a lot of shopping. We've gone... I mean, you name it, we've gone there. <laughs> it's been awesome, though. And she did go back last night, and I did cry. <laughs> Big shock. Uh, not as hard as I have in the past, though, so that was always good. I'm just going to not think about it today. I'll be fine. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I did not get to work on the sweater as much as I wanted to. Most of my knitting was sock knitting because I could shove it in my purse and go. So my 
first thing I want to show you is my sweater. And this is knit in the round on circulars, so I'm going to try not to pull the needles out. This is, let me show you the pattern first. This is the pearlless pullover, which means there are no pearls. Pearl, pearlless pullover. And that is by uh, Wisdom Yarns, which, oh, no, Valley Yarns, sorry. Valley Yarns, designed by Kirsten Hipsky. And it, so far, is a very simple, very easy knit. And I'm liking it. This is what it looks like. And that color is actually pretty true. The um, little pink stitch marker is where I was last time you saw it. And the yarn is Goshen. Let me pull out a ball that is non-mangled. This is Goshen Yarn by Valley Yarns. This is uh, yarn.com or webs. I bought it at Stitches South in Atlanta in April. It's a little bit more green than what you're seeing there. This yarn is very silky. Um, it's very drapey. I really, really like it. It's going to be very comfortable for summer. It's 48% Peruvian cotton. 46% modal and 6% silk. Very, very silky and drapey. And um, I can tell it's going to be very comfortable to wear next to the skin. So again, not anything too exciting. Um, I haven't measured, but I probably have a good at least five or six more inches before I start uh, doing any like shaping or anything like that. There really is no side shaping from what I can tell. Let me look and see. Um, yeah, there's no side shaping uh, up to the underarm area. So again, that is the Pearless Pullover by Wisdom Yarns. Valley Yarns. Why do I keep saying that? And I'm on the third ball. Actually, I'll show you. I have this much left of the third ball. And I bought ten, so we should be good. Okay, so that is item number one. Item number two, I just showed it to you, but I'll show it to you again. I worked on three pairs of socks over the last couple of weeks, and they were all by Desert Vista Dye Works yarn. <laughs> um, and uh, two of them are finished, and one's almost finished, which you will see. So this is the this is Desert Vista Dye Works self-striping. All I have to do is graph the toe. This is the Pineapple Upside Down colorway. I'm calling these my IKEA socks because I did work on these socks at the IKEA in Tampa and the IKEA in Atlanta. So these are I'm calling them my IKEA. I also worked on these socks. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how many places. Uh, they went to the beach a couple of times. These definitely were travel knitting, and I have the magic loop on some Knit Picks circulars. And last time you saw them, a couple of weeks ago, I was on the gusset decreases at the bottom. And I love her yarn. Love it. Love. I must if I'm knitting three pairs of socks and her yarn simultaneously. Okay, and then we have this pair I wanted to finish last night. I just couldn't, mainly because I was watching Tour de France and last night's finish was riveting and I didn't knit or spin or anything. I actually was uh, knitting on the socks during the uh, tour because I had spun earlier and I um, I was so enthralled with the end of the race that I couldn't even knit. It was that good. <laughs> um, they went up the uh, a really really tough mountain and it was very exciting to watch. So. Anyway, this yarn is also Desert Vista Dye Works. She's on Art, Art Fire, by the way. And um, sh this is the I said that other one was pineapple upside down cake, and I lied. <laughs> the other one is carrot cake. This is pineapple upside down cake, and I am on the toe decreases. So I will probably finish this sock today. The last time you saw this sock two weeks ago, I wasn't even at the heel yet. So I did some major knitting on these socks. Even though they were DPNs, I did travel with them. I took the chance of traveling with them. So, so I love, love, love this yarn, obviously. Next we have by Desert Vista Dye Works, big surprise. 
we have a finished sock. And this one I actually even grafted the toe. This is her jelly bean colorway, self-striping. Yes, it's that bright. And here is the finished sock. And I love it. It is the Welt Fantastic pattern in the Sensational Knitted Socks book by Char Charlene Church. I think that's how you say her name. And I love it. And last time you saw this sock two weeks ago, it was here. So craziness with the sock knitting. I um, wanted to mention that I was working on this sock at Bush Gardens. Now, I normally don't take knitting with me when we go to Bush Gardens, but since it was the four of us and I knew that day I was having some inner ear issues and sinus issues and I wasn't going to ride roller coasters. So I figured I would be waiting a lot for Joe and the girls while they were riding roller coasters. So I took sock knitting in. I've never taken sock knitting to Bush Gardens. So... I was sitting there uh, waiting for them and I was knitting and I was actually finishing up the toe of the sock. And then Joe and the girls came over and I started, you know, putting the stuff back in the bag and this lady comes over and she said uh, that she had been watching me for a while <laughs> and that she wanted me to show her how to do magic loop because she was watching me and she had tried magic loop, but she was having trouble with it. So she wanted me to show her. So I knit um, another row on the toe to show her, you know, what you do with magic loop and everything like that. And then she was like, uh, oh, I'm really sorry to interrupt. And Joe was like, don't worry, we're used to it. <laughs> so I thought it was really funny that I'm at a theme park and some lady comes up and asks for knitting advice. So I thought that was awesome. And Joe just thought that was hysterically funny. And Sarah and Rachel were just like, whatever. <laughs> so isn't that cool? I love this sock so, so, so much. I'll be casting the second sock on very, very soon. So the grand total of socks finished, if you count the one that I'm going to finish tonight, will be four pair, not four, pairs, four socks, because I finished my first Star Trek sock, and I finished uh, the carrot cake, pineapple upside down cake, and jelly bean. So a sock extravaganza is going great for me. I hope it's going great for you. We have so many uh, finished pairs of socks and that sock extravaganza in the, the threads. Oh my gosh, but we'll talk about that coming up. Okay, so that is that. Um, spinning, I am doing daily Tour de France, Tour de Fleece spinning podcast, little uh, five to eight minute episodes. If you haven't watched those yet, they're very short and uh, both of my daughters have appeared on them. So that has been fun for me. Um, I didn't get to do them every single day because of all the running around that we've been doing, but hopefully this week with having my life back, I will be able to do daily episodes again. So that's, that's the goal. Um, on one of the podcasts, episode 96, Rachel was talking about how she won a bigger stuffed duck than I did at Bush Gardens. And it's a, a prize that she won at one of the carnival type games. So we are having a contest. If you didn't watch that, you can still enter. If you go to the Sock Bunny group and look for a thread called Name Rachel's Duck or something like that, uh, you can enter to win one of two prizes. And so there's a picture of Rachel and I holding our ducks. I won a little tiny duck. She won a gigantic duck. <laughs> so, and they're stuffed ducks, not real ducks. Don't freak out. <laughs> So anyway, uh, she wants you to name it and you can pick the gender. So uh, Rachel will give a prize, which she hasn't chosen yet. It'll probably maybe be something from Bush Gardens or something like that. Um, so she's going to give a prize to the person whose name she likes the best and the one she decides to use for her duck. It could be a girl duck or a boy duck. And then um, I will also draw a random winner. So, you know, even if you're not the most creative person in the world, you could still win, you know. And Rachel so far is loving, loving all the names. She's going to have a really hard time picking. Um, so she's really enjoying this contest. So um, I'm going to draw the winner on the first regular podcast after the Tour de France has ended. And the tour ends next Sunday, which is the 21st. So probably the episode that I do on Sunday the 28th will be the one. I have a calendar over here in case you're wondering, what is she looking at? Um, so I'll probably draw it on Sunday the 28th will be when I'll do the, the winner for that. And then um, 
You do need to be a member of the Sock Bunny group to win. I am going to announce the winner on the podcast. You have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. I'm not chasing people down to give them prizes. If you win a prize, it's your responsibility to listen to the podcast and to contact me. I have so much going on. I cannot go chasing people down to give them prizes. Sorry. That's just how things go. And also limit one entry per person. And I think that's about it for the Name the Duck contest. Um, in Look What I Made, it's not really look at what I made. It's look at what Sarah made. My older daughter, Sarah, is very crafty. I, I would say even more crafty than I am. She is obsessed with crafts. So she uh, made some things out of duct tape. And this all started when we were in Atlanta. Um, her friend April... Uh, helped her and they made some wallets out of duct tape. Yes, I said duct tape wallets. And if you are interested in seeing duct tape wallets, I say Google it or go to YouTube. There are how-to videos. That's how she learned how to do it. And duct tape now comes in so many different colors. They even have NFL football teams, like they have the Steelers and the Broncos. and They have um, different geometric designs. There's some with bacon on it. I mean, there's some with pickles on it. There's so many different designs of duct tape. So Sarah made some wallets and stuff and she took some of her leftovers and made me a few little things. So first she made me this, um, this is my little carabiner thingy that she stole from me. But anyway, <laughs> she made like a little uh, keychain type fob thing. And this is leftover duct tape from one of her wallets that she made. Yes, that is duct tape. It's pretty cool, huh? Uh, we did buy some of the uh, those rings, uh, the binder rings that they have in the office supply department for her to make some more of these for her friends. And she did take all her duct tape with her back to Rhode Island. And she also uh, got the idea online to take little uh, Ziploc baggies. And I don't think I have one handy. Just a clear little plastic Ziploc bag and um, cover it with duct tape and then you're still able to close it with using the Ziploc uh, you know where you squeeze it to close it so this is leftover scraps from some of her duct tape wallets that she made and if I squeeze this it seals it closed but then I can open it and you can see inside let me see if I can get a good inside shot you can see inside this is where the Ziploc uh, type of seal is so she did the inside and the outside, which is really cool. So she made me three of these with her scraps. That was the scrappiest one of all. I think they're adorable. And one of these I will use uh, in my purse to keep my rosary in. I'll be able to find it really easy because these are very bright. Um, here's another one that she made uh, from some scraps from a wallet. This one has pigs on it, flying pigs. Dawn from Wolf Farms. You need some flying pig duct tape, I think. And then here's the back. And again, this is one of the ones that has the uh, Ziploc technology inside, and she did line the inside. And another one with the same flying pigs duct tape. Here's the back. But you can also cut out shapes and flowers and hearts and all kinds of stuff. And here's the inside of that one. There's the Ziploc part of it. So I think that's very cool. I was very impressed by that. She was obsessed. <laughs> that was her favorite craft to do during her downtime while she was home. So I just thought you would like to see that. Okay. So that is, look what I made. Let's go into fitness. Fitness is huge right now because I didn't podcast last week. So I have two prize drawings to do. First, if you're a new viewer, we have a fitness along every month in the Sock Bunny group. Any day that you work out at least 30 consecutive minutes, or if you are wearing a pedometer and it says you did at least 10,000 steps, you get one entry per day and you can enter your workouts in that month's fitness threads. And each month I draw a winner. The winner of the fitness along gets either some bare sock yarn that I will dye in up to three colors, or you could pick some sock yarn out of the shop. Or, or it could be fiber. If you are a spinner, you could pick fiber also. And then I will dye it up for you in up to three colors. And um, we also have a poster along, which all the rules are in the, 
the group so I will send you over there if you are interested in using a fitness poster to motivate yourself um, I didn't take the time to take my poster down or bring it over but I will next week so you can see it I am working towards 1,000 miles to get to go stay at a Disney resort and I am at drumroll 951 miles out of a thousand so I should hopefully within the next couple of weeks get to that thousand miles and then I'll start looking at dates and like I said before I want it to correspond to whenever they're having a a race going on like at Epcot or something like that so that'll be really fun so I drew the winner for our June fitness along which is where you post your daily workouts and I drew from numbers 2 to 688 yes I said 688 now some of those were me making comments but there were 688 fitness posts for June that's pretty mind, mind blowing I think the winner was an early number a very low number number 9 who is Kiwi Knitter 63, who is Donna from New Zealand. So Donna, let me know what you want. You can pick, like I said, something from the shop, or you can uh, tell me what you want, and I'll dye, uh, do a custom dye job for you. And then, um, oh, I wanted to say that she posted 21 workouts in June. So you rock. And uh, we had... 71 participants in the workout thread, including myself. So I am very proud of everybody. Keep up the great work. We have our July thread going. Lots of great workouts in there. I check it every few days just to make sure that nobody has a question or anything like that. So uh, I haven't checked it in a couple of days, but I'll catch up on that. And I am posting my own workouts. And I decided that if I ever randomly draw my own self, I'm giving myself a skein of Wolmiza. <laughs> That's my motivation to keep most posting my own workouts. So there you go. Um, okay, we also had a fitness poster along for June. And you had to post your beginning poster and your end poster to be eligible. And uh, I wanted to name all the people really quick. We had um, 16 people start and finish June fitness posters. And you guys are amazing. Keep up the great work. Don't forget um, if you, well, it's too late to do July if you haven't done July, but make a note on your calendar August 1st to post your uh, fitness poster for August. You will have the first seven days of August to uh, join in the fun. So the people who completed their posters in June were Am I Yes I Am, who is Suzanne, Nitty Witty Shell, who's Michelle, Allison Rose Boom, who is Allison, Grandma Lissa Knits, who's Melissa, Shalwood, who's Suzanne, L-M-E-C-O-L-L, -L, who is Linda, Retro Lemon, who is Jenna, Olive Hope, who is Olive, Die Cat, who is Diana, Polly Jean, who is Paula, Jess Dodd, who is Jessie, Wooly Girl, Wooly Girl, who is Jennifer. Uh, this name, I'm assuming it's a cable pattern. It's P4C4BP4, repeat. <laughs> it sounds like a cable pattern. And that's Billy. And then we have Happy K, who is Faith. Lori Lou, who is Lori, Crochet Locket, and Shea Bear, who is Shayla. I drew the winner right before I podcasted, and the winner is number three, Allison Rose Boom. Allison! Yay, Allison! And when Allison wins, you have your choice. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. You have your choice. You can either choose a $5 giftable pattern on Ravelry or a set of stitch markers donated by Denise of the Knitting Den, Kiki Boo Bags, her Etsy shop. These are really pretty. I wish this would focus. Focus. Saying focus doesn't make it focus. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Yeah. Oh, I don't have autofocus turned on. Let me try that. Let's see if that will work. There we go. The magic of technology. So there you go. So, Allison, let me know if you would like these stitch markers or a $5 pattern, whichever you would prefer. Just let me know. And congratulations. Okay, focus. All right, there I am. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move into Sock Stravaganza. I am going to show the prizes for Sock Stravaganza. I wanted to, wanted to do that once in July and once in August. We actually got a few more prizes donated. It's ridiculous the number of prizes we have for Sock Stravaganza. I'm super excited about it. Um, so, Sock Stravaganza, if you are a new viewer, is a sock knit along that we are having for June, July, and August. And as long as your socks were at least 
less than 50% done on June 1st, you can enter them into this uh, contest. So we have one general thread where all the socks go. Then we have threads for design your own socks, self-striping yarn, lace, vanilla, color work, socks knit with Sock Bunny Studios yarn, pictures of socks being knit in public, and socks from a book. And for socks from a book, you do have to take a picture of your socks with the book for it to count for the contest. Um, the knit along is going to end on August 31st. Feel free to chatter in the chatter thread if you have any questions or if you just want to talk. If you want to, you can use the project tag Sockstravaganza. And there is a prize thread that's going to show everything. Um, there's a couple of things I need to update pictures on uh, and add that we just got this past weekend. But I wanted to show everything. And I'm actually going to bring up the thread so that I know I'm getting everything right. So now I can't see myself. Oh, I'm freaking myself out. Um, so I'm going to go through these super fast because, you know, we don't want to spend all day on this part. So, but I am appreciative to everybody who donated. Seriously. So first, we have three things from Judy Lee 59 Knits. She donated three project bags. So we have one project bag. Second project bag and third project bag. So those are from Judy Lee 59 Knits. And then we have from Aqua Knits, she donated from her, uh, she has a unique, uh, she has unique designs at bigcartel.com. It's U N I C designs.bigcartel.com. So she donated. Uh, project bag. So we have a robot project bag, which is adorable. And we also have a Parisian project bag, and it's got sparkly Eiffel Towers on it. We also have three skeins of yarn donated by me. My nose is itching. I apologize for that. Let me grab everything out of here. So I donated three skeins of yarn. I donated, I'm not going to say what they are. I'm just going to show them real fast. Okay. Just to speed things up. So these three, no, four, I donated four. These four are from me. If you want to um, see what they are, you can go into the prize thread. Those four are from me. We also have a pattern gifted by Deborah Tomasello. We have a pattern gifted by Retro Lemon, a pattern gifted by, uh, Lemnit Crochet. Uh, that's going to be her new pattern, uh, which I will talk about coming up. Um, Java Pearl is donating a pattern. Blooming Knitter is donating a pattern. Uh, four Kitties Have I donated three skeins of yarn, and they are this one, this one, and this one. So these are from Four Kitties Have I. Thank you guys very much. And then we have uh, DC Knitter, Colleen, donated these three. Oh, that, that, not that one. Sorry, I lied. These three. <laughs> and then we have um, two bags from Piddleloop. The two project bags from her. And they were, they were shipped flat, so they need, still need to be fluffed out a little bit. But here we go. Two of those. This one's like a sour cream type bag. Sorry, I'm going so fast, but I don't want to spend forever on this part. Um, and then also we have from PJ Crossan, who is Paula. She donated this beautiful skein of yarn from Alaska. Very beautiful. And then Nitty Girl also donated a skein of yarn from her shop. Where did I put? Oh, here it is. She donated one to you and one to me. Um, her shop is Undead Yarn on Etsy. Undead Yarn with no S at the end. Undeadyarn.etsy.com. This is a colorway called Killer Rabbit. Oh, I can switch back to myself now. Yay, I can see me. Um, this is a colorway that she called Killer Rabbit. Her, uh, her yarns all have like a monster theme to them, which is really funny. And she even drew on the envelope for the card a Killer John John. <laughs> And uh, she probably didn't know this when she drew this, but um, we have a joke in our family where John John, my bunny, my stuffed bunny, is threat always threatens to kill Joe. He's been doing it. Joe and I have been married uh, 23 years, and he's been saying he's going to kill him. 
you know, to, and make it look like an accident. <laughs> We're a weird family. But anyway, so she drew the killer rabbit without even knowing that. So my husband laughed really hard when he saw that picture and when he saw the name of the yarn. So, and the, um, the colorway was inspired by the uh, killer rabbit from uh, Monty Python's, um, oh my gosh, I have to read it because I, oh, it's Monty Python. What is the, anyway, you know what it is. My brain's not working today. So thank you very much. So she sent one to you guys and she sent one to me. I think that's going to have to be a shawl. Okay, so those are all the prizes that have been donated. I did want to mention a couple of coupon codes. Um, unique designs on Big Cartel. U-N-I-Q designs on big dot car, big, bigcartel.com. She's the one who donated the robot bag and the um, Paris bag. She has a coupon code SUMMER2013 for 10% off your entire order until the end of August. And Piddle Loop. Her shop is shop.piddleloop.com. She also gave you guys a coupon code that is U-Rock, Y-O-U, Rock, for 10% off. It's a loyalty code that she uses that does not expire. So you can check out those two coupon codes. Thank you, everybody who has donated. I am still really loving Socks Extravaganza. I'm loving looking at all your finished socks. My husband is extremely surprised how many people have knit socks for this, and I am very, very happy. Um, next we will talk about tips and tricks. This is not a knitting tip or trick. This is a life knitting, not a life tip or trick. Um, a couple of times Sarah and I went to a local beach, which is about, I guess it's about 20 miles from here. It's called Honeymoon Island. It's, um, at Honeymoon Island State Park in Dunedin, Florida. And we went there a couple of times and I noticed, sorry, hold on. I got to wipe my nose. I noticed That a lot of people don't know this trick. <laughs> when you go to the beach, there are going to be seagulls. It's a fact of life. And seagulls, for some reason, instinctively know how to take your food. You could be eating a chip and have it uh, like this, about to eat it, and they will swoop down and take that chip out of your hand and fly off with it. It happens all the time. So my tip, if you're going to the beach, is take an umbrella. The second day that Sarah and I went to the uh um, beach. I actually used the umbrella because it rained for a little while while we were there. So uh, you could use the umbrella to keep the sun off, to keep the rain off, but also to keep the birds away from your food. So while we were eating, we sat under the umbrella. If you have the umbrella low enough down while you're eating, the birds can't see the food and they can't fly in and attack you and take your food from you. One lady, I was walking down the beach and this one lady was eating a sandwich and the bird, and it was like hovering above her and she didn't even know. It was just there waiting. And as soon as she took a bite and like held the sandwich out like that, the birds swooped down and took the sandwich. And then a swarm of seagulls comes and like attacks the sandwich. So take an umbrella to the beach. <laughs> or you can sit under a beach towel, but that's a little bit more cumbersome. An uh, umbrella is much easier to manage. So that's my life tip for the week. Take an umbrella to the beach. Um, favorite things. I'm going to show you something that um, my niece made for me um, when she was in the fourth grade. And she lives up in Pennsylvania and she has her very own John John and she loves her John John and in fact she has um, a girl John John just like my John John has a wife um, and her, her her name is Jan Jan mine is PJ but hers is Jan Jan so anyway when she was in the fourth grade she did a painting of John John I just wanted to show it to you for you John John fans out there there you go there's a painting of John John I need to actually get a frame for this and hang it up. I think it would be really cute to hang it up in my craft room. She's got some cats in the bottom corner too. In both bottom corners. So yay. <laughs> I think it's really adorable. <laughs> That's from my niece. The gi the gifts that I love most are always the handmade ones. So, um, Stash enhancement. I have a lot of stash enhancements to show you. First, I wanted to say thank you to Suzanne and my Yes I Am. She sent me a very sweet card in the mail. Thank you, Suzanne, for that. And um, 
Lemnit Crochet, who is Lauren, who has the Lemnit Crochet podcast, she just released a sock pattern recently, and it's called Seaweed Socks. It's really pretty, so she gifted that to me. Thank you very much. I'm not printing patterns anymore until I actually need them, so I will not be printing this. And also, I'm working towards an iPad with my fitness, so um, thank you, Lauren, very much for that. Um, I did get some yarn. My neighbor that lives down the street, her name is Camille. She's very sweet, and she always watches the podcast. And she uh, gave me some yarn, and when you see the name, you'll see why. This is Lorna's Laces. It's a pink colorway, and it is called Flamingo Stripe. <laughs> so she said she saw it, and she had to get it for me. Thank you so much, Camille. I have decided already that this is going to be a pair of fingerless mitts. Definitely. So that will be cast on soon. Probably when Sock Stravaganza is over, I will cast those on. So thank you, Camille. And also Camille donated a big bag of yarn uh, for Sarah to take back to her school. Um, Sarah was not able to fit all of it in her uh, luggage, but she did love it all. And I will make sure that the rest of it makes it up to her school. Um, I might dip into it a little bit to do some charity knitting um, when we have our hat knit along in um, September, October, November. But other than that, I'll make sure the rest of it gets up there. Then I also was given... Um, oh, Paula, PJ Crossan from Alaska gave, sent me some fiber. Beautiful fiber. She's the one who donated the yarn from Alaska to the Sock Stravaganza. This is very pretty, very, very pretty. I probably will do this on the spindle. It's two ounces, and it's super, super pretty. Um, it's hand-dyed merino, so I'll probably do this on the drop spindle. And then she also donated a bunch of stickers, some of which Sarah, my 20-year-old, confiscated because they were Disney Princess stickers, so Sarah confiscated those. But she also uh, sent me some to use. Paula sent me some to use for my fitness posters. So these are some animal stickers, which are adorable. And some butterflies. And some smiley faces. And I haven't updated my poster in a while, so these will come in handy. And some more smiley faces. She also donated some stitch markers and a needle, which is very needed. Um, I did not get to sew the buttons on my Tap and Z yet because when I was in Atlanta, I was going to sew the buttons on, but the needle I brought with me, the eye was too big to go through the button, uh, shank, the shank of the button. So I haven't finished sewing the buttons on there. I got like two because I was like unthreading it. I was like, no. So I decided to uh, just wait. So now I don't have to go buy a needle that's small enough. Thank you. And also I have to show the card because it's one of my favorite sayings. What's up chicken butt? What's up? Chicken butt. <laughs> so thank you, Paula, for all of that. I really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate your donation for the Sock Stravaganza. And then, last but not least, um, this pattern that was gifted to me, let me just say, I will be printing it because I'm going to do a review of it um, and talk about it on the podcast on an up upcoming, upcoming episode because it looks very interesting. Uh, it's from Harper. And she sent it to me. It is a pattern. It's a heel tutorial technique. And it's called Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And it's from the Socks Therapist Designs. And she said, how could I not share a sock pattern called Fish Lips with you during Sock Stravaganza? And if you are a new viewer, I um, am slightly obsessed with pictures of fish with lips or like stuffed fish with lips or when I used to rubber stamp I had quite I still have them quite a collection of rubber stamps with fish with lips I don't know why I've told you I'm weird right <laughs> so thank you Harper very much I think her first name is Robin I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong because I'm terrible with names so uh, I will be doing a review of that on an upcoming episode so uh, maybe I'll try it for one of the pairs of socks that I'm doing for socks extravaganza if I haven't gotten to a heel yet have to look at that. 
So anyway, that's my major stash enhancement. I feel like I'm going fast to try to go through this, but I'm trying not to take forever, and we're already at 49 minutes. So um, lastly, I want to talk about what I'm watching and reading. Of course, I've been watching the uh, Tour de France, and I've really been enjoying it. This is my third year watching it, and I really uh, like it. It's the only sport that I enjoy watching, so I don't know why I like it. I just really do. And then... Um, uh, Rachel and I did get Sarah to watch some Doctor Who episodes while she was home, and now Sarah is in love with the Daleks, just as Rachel and I are. <laughs> and, and Sarah even got to the point where she was going around the house humming the Doctor Who theme song. So that's how you know somebody is a true fan. <laughs> So uh, I guess that's about it. I really, really appreciate you watching this. I know you have a lot of choices of podcasts to watch. I haven't watched a po podcast in three weeks, and I looked, and I have about 40 hours of podcasts to watch and listen to. So it's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks playing catch up with that, but I'm actually looking forward to uh, catching up. I know some people I have like <clears throat> four episodes to watch. <laughs> So that will be really fun. So I really, really do appreciate you. And um, like I said, try to leave some um, iTunes reviews for people if you uh, have the ability to do that. It really does help us podcasters. Um, this is a part-time job doing the podcast. Um, I don't think very many podcasters just sit down and record without having at least some preparation that they do before. I know me, I did two hours of prep for this podcast, gathering everything, typing up notes, um, all the, like writing different communications and stuff. It took me two hours to prepare. It's going to take me an hour. I mean, it took me like an hour to record. It'll take at least an hour to upload. And then I have all the different social media places that I put it, put it. Now I am not complaining. I love doing the podcast, but it is work. So if you could take you know, three minutes to go and say thank you to your podcasters It is very much appreciated. And like I said, a lot of podcasters right now are being kicked off blip. And, you know, I think for some people it might be hurting their feelings a little bit. And so if you could make them feel better, that would be really nice. So with that being said, I hope you have a great week. I will be doing, hopefully, daily podcasts for the rest of this week through the end of uh, the tour, it ends, the Tour de France ends next Sunday, and, um, so I hope to be, hope to be doing daily episodes this week, so I will see you tomorrow, have a great week, and keep on crafting, bye!